All right, guys. So this is the first episode back on the TCC Entertainment Podcast. We have a very, very special guest, a songwriter, uh, artist, model, entrepreneur, and a former alumni at University of California of Arts, correct? Yes, I have one more semester. Okay. Well, then she will be finishing that up very, very soon. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit more. I am Maya Sufi. I'm 24 years old. Um, I'm an artist. Like he said, he already told the basics of what it is. But um, I live in L.A. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. And now I'm 100% Lebanese. Hola, hola. What's good, guys? It's Ilias. I know you guys want to go back to the podcast, but before we do that, we have to quickly thank our sponsors over at Full Sense Supplements. We went ahead and got you guys a little bit of a discount code. All you guys got to do is just make sure to type ANWAR15 when you're checking out. Go on supplements.co, and the website will be in the description down below. My personal favorite is actually the pre-workout, which gets me hyped before the gym and can also be used before a podcast or for streaming just for that extra kick of energy. Now, back to the episode. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got Infamous G with us to the left of me. Hello, hello. We were listening to your songs like the past couple of days. I gotta know who this song's about. Um, <laughs> it's Don't Want You Back. And there was a lot of raw emotion in there, so I wanted to see if you wanted to tell the people back at home who that song is about. <laughs> Don't Want You Back was the first single I ever released, and I ended up putting it on my album that I put out this year. Um, and it was about, honestly, it was about a lot of men. <laughs> like, not just one in particular. Like, I feel like it was just a song that I felt like could be played at the club and also played, like, on your own, not <laughs> crying to it or something like that. <laughs> like, teenage girls screaming to it kind of thing. I really like that song. So it's about, like, multiple men who have been in my life. A lot of my songs are inspired by relationships. So I assume that Pressure, which was your latest album, was also what stemmed most of your inspiration from? Mm, no, Pressure was different. Pressure is like my summer album. Okay. It was more about like, like, I don't know, I wanted to combine different genres together. So like, for example, the song Pressure is like a house track. The song um, Nasty is like Afro beat R&B track. Um, uh, Teeth and Tongue is like an ethnic Latin with Arabic beat structure and like belting it's just very different like they're all different but combined like this the, it just made a great summer album you know what i mean and like some of the most of the music was like i made that album when i i went to lebanon in spring and i came back so i went for like two weeks i performed for the first time in lebanon i performed there and um like twice and i loved it and i came back and i was like i want to make a whole new album <laughs> like something different than talking about just relationships i want to make something that's like a vibe that you, you just want to party to you want to listen to and like there can be like heartfelt things in it but I wanted it to be more like smooth you know I feel like yeah. 100% and then when it comes to creating these albums do you usually base them off life experiences or do you go into like how you just said like oh you want to create a whole genre filled uh, different version type album like create moods for everybody that's a great question um i think that okay so before i was an artist i was a songwriter mm -hmm. so like i mean i've always sang my whole life but like the way i got myself into the industry was like writing so um i think i don't even think about anything like the beat like i think about either i start with the beat and i just really like the beat and i hear something and i hear a song that could be talked about and usually it's based off my life experiences or i'll hear a beat and i'll be like this needs to be a hit song, like, no matter who sings it, not just, like, me, like, pertains only to me, I want, like, I, sometimes I write a song, and I'm like, this needs to be a hit, this is, like, like, song confidence, for mm -hmm. example, that went on the radio in Lebanon, like, that's the type of song anyone can sing, it can pertain to everyone, you know what I mean, but sometimes it's, like, I'll either write a song, and I'll make the melody, like, by myself, and then I'll go to my producer, we work together on a beat around that song, or we'll make a beat, and I'm like, this is fucking <laughs> and I'm like, I need to make a hit with this. You know what I mean? 100%. So you usually make your own melodies, or do you produce as well? I make all my own melodies. I write all my own lyrics, and I sing everything myself. Um, I just work with many producers on the tracks. So I'll basically sit with the producer. Sometimes they'll send me a beat, and I'll like it. But some, like for the most part, I work with my main producer is Aaron. Mm -hmm. Aaron um, Scott McAfee. Um, shout out, Aaron. Shout out, Aaron. He's amazing. 
he was with me for like years and um, he's a great like producer when it comes to sampling so like that's like that's like what we started with now he's like self-producing and like plays a lot of instruments and mm -hmm. stuff like that but um, I'll go sit with him and I'll like hum a melody or I'll sing a melody and then he'll like play it on the piano because I, I can play piano but slower than him <laughs> so he'll like play on the piano or like play on the guitar or like do something and then we'll stack melodies and we'll figure it out and then he usually like I'll tell him what kind of drums I want what kind of melodies what kind of instruments whatever and like we'll figure it out together you know what I mean so he He's makes the hands he makes like a majority of the beats for your music because it's all super super different so at the beginning he was so like a lot of music I haven't put out I think I have a hundred songs so it's like there's so much music I haven't put out so he was with you from the beginning you know mm -hmm. what I mean like um but um on the latest album he did he produced four out of the ten songs I believe um he did Teeth and Tongue You Can't Tell Me How to Feel um Temptations and Attraction and then Pressure was by, with this so on the album I loved it because half a lot of the producers were from Lebanon Mm -hmm. And a lot of were from here because I wanted to give like a platform for my hometown, my home country. Right. <laughs> you like know that. what I mean? Like, they honestly, it's really hard with the economic crisis there, and like the all the people who work in the entertainment industry aren't making nearly as much as they should be making. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. It's tough out there. Like, it's a lot better here than it is there. So, and a lot of them can't even get a visa to get out. So it's a really tough situation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was just fun. Like. Uh, I had a mix of a bunch of DJs work on that project. So when you go through the process of working with these producers, are they pulling up to the studio, or is a lot of it going via internet, like email, text message? Oh no, I hate working email and text message. Never like that. Like I'm all the the only ones who I did that with were the ones in Lebanon, and mm -hmm. that was purely for the sake of the project. And it ended. I like worked around them. But like when I started developing, I have this album I've been working on called Patience for a long time. It's gonna be like a twenty-five song album. I'm not putting. It's not my next album. I'm putting out. I'm saving it for like later. Mm -hmm. um, like my next album, I'll tell you about after. But basically, patience has like a bunch of really powerful songs, and all of them like I made the main melody of the beat too. And like I love working as much as I can on my own songs. You know what I mean? Like I love that. Hundred percent. Yeah. And when it comes to working with these producers, how important is it to you to like? make sure the vibe is right with them like has any producers like ever given you rubbed you off the wrong way or is it important for you as an artist to like kind of get to know them first before working i honestly like when i first started in the music industry i was so naive like about everything my parents are not involved in music like my both parents are both engineers <laughs> and my sister is in pre-med so none of them have, like i know that was a hard conversation yeah. to tell your parents you were going into music <laughs> It was so hard being a Muslim Arab. <laughs> Tell your parents I want to be a superstar. <laughs> what did you ask me in the first place? <laughs> I, like, like, I guess the relationship between working with these producers. Like, was it yes. they pulled up and just started working? Or did you kind of get to know them a little bit better? Because, like, I make music as well. And when I work with other producers, for me, it's kind of important to understand, like, where their mind is at and kind of get a vibe because I feel like it makes the music even better. No, you're so right. Like I, like I said, I was naive when I first started, and then I just was like, I believed everything that someone would tell me, and like the first producer I ever worked with, just like, I spent a lot of money, let's say, on, like, okay, spent a lot of money like on beats, like working with her, and I was like, still like, didn't know how to play piano, or didn't understand how to read chords, or like, work Pro Tools, or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, I still didn't go to music school yet. This is like the first time I ever went to record in the studio. What age was this? I was like, the first time I ever recorded in the studio, I think it was six years ago. I think I was 18. So for all you 18 year olds. Yeah. Don't, don't be nine. Yeah. <laughs> this, I worked with this one producer and um, now we're fine. It's like, I don't really hold grudges and it's whatever. Like, I just don't work with her anymore. But um, mm. basically uh, what happened was she knew we were naive, we created this contract of, oh, let's do these songs, and um, let's, like, uh, I'll produce them for you, you pay me X amount, whatever, and I'll make sure they're fully mastered and everything. And I didn't know what the difference was mixing on the two track versus mixing with the stems, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, when we would be mixing the songs, they'd be on the two track and not with the 
stems. stems yeah. So it's not a full, it's a terrible quality yeah. music. And because I we didn't know what stems were at the time, like, yeah. you know what I mean? We didn't know what, what that was. I had to go figure it out later. Um, it just, like, at the beginning, like, even though I, I loved working with her, I thought she was my friend. Sometimes, like, you can't be naive, and, like, you really have to get to know someone. And, like, ask other people who've worked with this person. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's it saves you time. Because it's, like, if other people are saying good things about them, that's good. Yeah. If other people are saying terrible things about them, you got to listen to that sometimes. Because you'll get screwed over, beaten on, stepped on in this industry. Yeah. If you Especially don't. taking advantage yeah, of Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'll be completely taken advantage of but now I have my team, like my main engineer is Jacob Wilder, mm -hmm. and he's amazing. We use his studio for everything. He has everything. He's been working with me for years. He's amazing. Shout out to Jacob. Shout out Jacob. I love you, Jacob. <laughs> um, Jacob, Aaron, and then I have other producers, William Nahed. He's amazing. He produced Nasty. Fire. And um, my album I'm working on right now, it's going to be like six to eight songs. And I just want to make like Afrobeat stuff, but with like english and like some latin and arabic sound like i want it to be r&b but ethnic you know what I, I like mean? that a lot because that's what i was saying with some of my friends that had a discussion before that like a lot of new music is not going to just be like one genre it's going to be like uk mixed with like afro pop with like all like four or five yeah. different genres together and i think that's something that you do really well it's like you don't put yourself in a box and so when i was listening to your music that was instantly what stood out to me it's like from song to song it's like a completely different vibe Thank i think you, you do so really much. well so thank you i appreciate you on that um, my next question was going to be, since you've already done so many different genres, is there one that you haven't done yet that you want to get into? That's a good question. Yeah. Maybe some drill? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I want to, I like, as a kid, I was, I always, I know I speak English and Arabic, but I want to, I learned French a little bit, and I want to learn more, and I want to sing in French a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's like something I really want to do, or Spanish. Like, that would be so dope. And to be able to sing English, Arabic, Spanish, French, and my music, and appeal to people all around the world would be so dope. You should do Farsi. Farsi. <laughs> you know that would go crazy. <laughs> True. Farsi sounds are great. Yeah. But I would, um, another genre. I do everything. Like, I think on the this album, I really want to focus on, like, trying to stay away from samples and having a completely original composition. You know what I mean? And like having every song different, just like the last, except in a way where I'm focusing on this whole R&B ethnic. I'm not going to house. I'm not going to EDM. I'm gonna focus on pure R&B and like creating vibes. What's wrong with house? Huh? What's wrong with house music? No, I love house, but on this album, I wanna <laughs> do something I never did before, which is like before I was all over the place doing all types of genres. You know what I mean? Now I want to focus on one, one that I, like, after going to Lebanon for three months and performing all summer and doing everything I did, like, I just fell in love with ethnic sounding R&B, and especially Afrobeats, because the drums, they just, like, I like to dance. You know what I mean? That's what I like. Sweet. But doing different genres isn't a bad thing. I'm sure that helped you develop into the artist you are today. Yeah. And with that too like how important do you feel that is for every artist to kind of explore different genres oh 100 percent. and i'm going to continue exploring other genres just for this project of six to eight songs i want to like focus on this you know what i mean mm -hmm. i want to see if i'm able to do that because that's challenging because like if you think about it like it's challenging to be in different genres but it's also kind of easy because then it's like you're not having to challenge yourself to make eight great songs all in the same genre with the same sounding drums mm -hmm. everything gets a little redundant at that point yeah so how can I, that's a challenge for me you know what i mean 100 mm -hmm. because a lot of labels i talk to and i'm not sure if i want to sign to a label maybe i do maybe i don't it depends but um, depends on the situation exactly. maybe you might not have it depends. to it depends yeah. but if a label were to talk to me like a lot of managers and people have advised me like they want to be able to place you in a category in a, in a genre that they can know how to market you by because mm -hmm. everything's strategic to them you know mm -hmm. so they were like try to focus one project on just one genre like where it all makes sense and it's cohesive together so i was like okay challenge accepted i want to take it back a little bit now towards performing and i know you said over the summer you were in lebanon for a bit you also got a residency do you want to go into that a little bit and talk about what you were doing there yes so I went to Lebanon in March for spring break originally, and I performed twice. The original person who booked me was named DJ Bib. Shout out to Bib. 
and uh, he booked me at this club called Void, owned by Tony Nader. And um, this was like my first performance in Lebanon ever. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, to be mm-hmm. honest. So <laughs> it's like, I performed at Fashion Week, I performed at like classy events. Like, this was my first time performing at the club at like 1 a.m. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my parents were like, <laughs> okay. Like, they came calm with down. you to Lebanon, or were, you, or were they still here? Oh, they were still here. They okay. did not come. Okay. They've never seen me perform at the club. I don't think, I think that's something that we don't need to do together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, parents stay over drink, there. So yeah. my parents don't drink, so it's, like, not for them. Yeah. Um, but I went to Void with, uh, and I performed with DJ Bib and this MC named Haru. And it was a lot of fun, and uh, I got to sing Don't Want You Back, as well as, like, two unreleased songs. Mm-hmm. And people really liked it, and I gained, like, a lot of engagement from it online, and people were, like, come back and perform, like, and I was getting, like, offers from all these different clubs. So I came back to Lebanon. And uh, when I came back, I performed at the other, like the same owner of Void, the first place I performed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another club called Blue Bays in Betron. And the thing is, I grew up in a town called Tripoli. So most of the people who knew me and were like my fans and followers and whatever, and like had been keeping up with my music, were from Tripoli. And Tripoli doesn't have any bars or clubs, and there's no alcohol, except in like a very small part. But basically, the like the the uh, closest place to Tripoli where you can go like nightlife mm-hmm. experience is Betron, which is where all these clubs were. So all the kids from my hometown were like coming to my shows and stuff and it was like those were the people who kind of started this. Um, and like booking tables and like calling the is Maya coming, like asking about me. So that like really helped, you know? Mm-hmm. And so uh, basically then uh, I performed at Blue Bay and I performed with this DJ named T Mac and it was great. Um, and then after that I got an offer from this club called Caprice in Beirut, which is the capital of Lebanon. I was just about to ask you that because I have a lot of Lebanese friends and every single summer, every Lebanese person I know goes back. Exactly. And apparently like the party scene over there is insane. Yeah. So yeah, I'd love to hear about that. I'm sorry, LA, but in comparison, like I pick nightlife in Lebanon wow. every day. Because they just have, they put an effort into their nightlife. They make it a whole thing. Like you feel like you're at a wedding. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's fireworks, there's flames, there's acrobats and dancers and shows. And, and people, like, they advertise the DJs, they advertise the artists, they make flyers. They're, you know, they're, it's cool. Like here, it's like, when you go to Bootsy, when you go to Highlight, do you know who the DJ is half the time? No, exactly. And that's kind of unfair. They should well, I, I can't say that because I have some friends who DJ at Bootsy, so I do know but some. If you we know can't slander them, like that, but yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the, you don't know, like, I don't know, for the most part, they don't advertise or make flyers for them. Yeah, you don't do put any. their name on the flyer, yeah, you they just show up. Too, yeah, they Because, like, that's how it should be. They're artists, too. And um, so, basically, like, that's the thing with Lebanon. When I started performing at Caprice, I got an offer. It was with this DJ named Ace. He's a very good DJ, very famous. Um, he's been, like, he's the one who started Afro music in Lebanon. Like, he's the first DJ oh, who played cool. Afro music in Lebanon, which is, like, really fucking sick, you know what I mean? Um, and he started this, his own company, which is, like, Jungle Safari. And with Jungle Safari, it's, like, he'll go rent venues and have his own event, which is all African-style music, pure African. And it's really dope. But, like, cool. yeah. It's very distinct. Exactly. So I performed with Ace all summer, which is like R&B night. It was the, at Caprice, the one night of English music is R&B night on Wednesdays. So I would perform every Wednesday, basically, with Ace. And I would sing some of my own songs, and I would sing some other songs. And I would have, it was great, I would literally have all these teenage boys, like after I, after like 18 year old boys, like after I finished performing, standing in line, being like, can I take a picture with you, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> yeah, I saw some of the clips, like it looked so packed out, it, it was, was insane. It was great, it was insane, I on honestly top. I saw that. loved it, I love Capri, I love both Blue Bay and Caprice, mm-hmm. but Caprice has like this big stage and it's like, you know what I mean? It's insane. There's a lot of tourists that come. The same owners. The owners are, are AdMind Hospitality, which is, like, one of the biggest entertainment groups in all of the Middle East. And they have, like, White Dubai and Dubai. Um, and they own, like, most of Lebanon's finest dining and, like, nicest clubs. So Very cool. It's really cool. So, I'm pretty sure some of your fans are wondering now, when's the next album? I'm working on it right now. It's six to eight songs, like I said, and it's all like ethnic R and B music. And it will probably be. I'm gonna start releasing the first single off of it in like a month. Um, you hear that? A month. A month. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll probably release the album in December, okay. right before Christmas. Oh, great time! When I go back to Lebanon and perform again. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. 
And on top of that, we do have some submitted questions uh, from our Instagram story. They're going to be kind of sporadic. Okay. So just be prepared. Okay. And we made sure not to do the crazy ones. Okay, so sounds good. the first one is, what are your thoughts on Andrew Tate? He just got banned on Instagram. I don't even, I hate Andrew Tate. You hate I Andrew Tate? I think he's a disgrace. And he, for one second, he praises Muslim women. And for another, he disrespects all women completely. Like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Wishy-washy. I don't, we shouldn't even spend time talking about Andrew Tate. I agree. The second <laughs> question is, what is a good way to make money as an upcoming artist? Um, a good way to make money. Honestly, starting with songwriting is a great way to make money, get your credibility up, get, like, think about all the people you work with. You know what I mean? Think about how, like, Travis Scott started, for example. He was a pianist, and then he became, he couldn't get girls, so he became a producer. He literally talked about it. And yeah. So, yeah, he became a producer. Then he worked with Kanye, and he did all of Kanye's drums on an album, and Kanye put him on and became an artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Start with your strengths, other than being famous. Anyone can go be famous. You know what I mean? Like, for you gotta be humble for a sec when you're first starting, <laughs> for like a couple years, mm -hmm. and like work your way up. You know, like use your strengths. If it's live performing, do live performing. Like go to your nearest bars and pubs and start there and just perform and gain fans from your hometown. It's a great way to do it. Yeah, or I like how you said that. Like take a step back and see how you could provide value to somebody else, and then exactly. go from there and not really expecting too much in return. Like whenever, yeah. like a lot of my friends, like I didn't make them pay up front at all. I'm just like, no, it's okay, it's fine. Like I wanna, I wanna do this for you, you're my friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I wanna write a song for you. And then she'll give me some royalty and she'll put me, she'll give me credit and she'll, and she'll do a bunch of stuff for me and things like that. That's amazing. That goes back to the saying, give more than what you receive. Exactly. And With no expectation. Exactly. Yeah. And we had another question. We do. It says, what advice would you give to the kids back at home that want to be in your shoes and do exactly what you're doing? The advice that I give is even though you're stuck in a situation where it's really difficult right now with everything going on, um, to focus in on something and make the best of what you can. Like, for example, like whatever you want to do, you can do it at home. You can, like, I can write songs in my bedroom all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can find a way around things. And I feel like a lot of people, they don't do things either because, like, they are they have a fear of getting, like, fa of being in a situation of failure. Or they have a fear of, like, not being good enough for something. Mm -hmm. Or they're lazy. They all, There's always an excuse. Like, I just feel like a long time ago I used to make so many excuses for myself as to why I wasn't doing the things I wanted to do. And then, like, one day I stood up to my parents. I stood up to everyone. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a superstar, and I believe I can Hell yeah, that's the way to do it. You know what I mean? I actually have another And I just part, changed yeah. my, you change your attitude, yeah. your, your perspective on life, your hobbies, the way you're living your life. Like, if you're doing something toxic, smoking, drinking too much, whatever the fuck, being on drugs, cut that shit out and focus on, like, the things that you need to do. Partying every day, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that shit isn't good. It becomes toxic. I want to ask this question, too, because you said you were Muslim earlier, right? Oh, but something I want to get into is that a lot of people in, like, the Muslim community, when they're trying to do music or entertainment, it's really hard to have that conversation with their parents. How can they have that combo? I think I think everyone's parents are different. I'm not going to lie. Like, mm -hmm. I think my parents, like, at first, my mom is very strict in comparison to my dad, or she was, not anymore. Mm -hmm. but, like, growing up, she was extremely strict. Like, she prays five times a day. She's never drinking alcohol. She's never kissed a guy other than my dad. She's never smoked or done a drug. Like, you know what I mean? She's yeah. literally an angel on this earth. Like, <laughs> that woman doesn't go to heaven. I yeah. don't know who it is. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just like what I'm saying. So, um, she is just very naive and innocent. And she grew up in Lebanon. She went to college in Lebanon. She moved out here after she married my dad and had me right away. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I can't blame her for the way she thinks. My dad went to university out here when he was 18. So he understands me a lot more. You yeah. know what I mean? And he stood up for me. Honestly, like, shout out to dad. He supported me. He stood up for me. He, like, it took me, my sister, my dad convincing my mom for years, like, let her do this, let her do this, let her do this without giving her shit for it. And my mom never stopped me from doing anything. Mm -hmm. She would just kind of give me shit for it and make me feel bad about it. But now she stopped. Now she supports me. She's like, at the end of the day, you're my daughter, and I love you. And, like, because it got to a point where it's, like, for years we were going back and forth, and I kind of stood up to her, and I was like, look, mom, like, I will always love you and respect you, but, like, you need to let me do what I want to do because one day I'm going to make enough money completely on my own and be independent to a point where it's like I'm going to be able to do what I want, want to do anyways and it's like do you want to not have me in your life 
because of this, because of my career choice? Or do you want to, like, you want me to quit my career and be unhappy? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you, it really makes them think about things. It's just the way that you phrase things and the time you take to talk to them and explain things and your intention behind things that tells everything. I like how you talk, like you said, you want me to be happy because I think every parent wants their child to be the happiest. Exactly. And my mom, like, literally cried when I told her, like, I'll be so, I'll do whatever you want, but, like, I'll be really unhappy if mm-hmm. I have to do it. You know what I mean? And she was like, no, at the end of the day. And she stopped. She supports you now. And, you know, you just got to prove them wrong a little bit. Like, she didn't think I would go this far. You know what I mean? Like, she, she, she hates music. <laughs> she hates listening to music. <laughs> she hates all music. <laughs> literally, crazy. she's like, turn this off. You know That's what I mean? Crazy. So it's yeah. just like... But then she was like, you have a really nice voice. I actually really like it, and I support you. And then she saw what I did in Lebanon. She was like, everyone's talking to me, telling me, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think so, you might have to bring her out on stage one day. Yeah, Maybe I not think in Lebanon, day. but in L.A., and then that's when it'll really hit her. She's like, if you sing somewhere without alcohol, I'll yeah. come. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that wraps things up. There's nothing else that you want to ask her? Oh, so far, so good. Maya, we appreciate you coming Thank on you so to much for having me. TCC you. Entertainment. Yeah, it was a pleasure having you, and I think that is it for today. So if you guys are interested in hearing more about Maya, make sure to go ahead and check her out on Instagram. Her at will be down in the description down below. And uh, is there anything else you want to go ahead and promote? Because I know you got the album later this year. Yes, I have a single coming out in a month, so watch out for that. And um, I have my album coming out in December, and I'm going back to Lebanon to perform. And like they said, follow me on Instagram to keep up. And, and she's bringing us to Lebanon. We're out. <laughs>